Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to solve October, November 2016 paper. The paper number is 21. Today we will solve uh, section A in this video. Section B we will solve in another video. Let's start today's paper. Okay. Question number one is on your screen. A car of mass 800 kg is traveling at a speed of 25 meter per second along a straight horizontal road. A part is state how velocity differs from speed. The difference between the velocity and the speed, um, one difference can be that the velocity is a vector quantity and the speed is a scalar quantity. Another difference can be that the velocity is the rate of change of displacement, while the speed is the rate of change of speed. So you can write any one. I have written this answer. Let me show you. This is question number one, A part on your screen. Velocity is change in displacement per unit time, while speed is change in distance per unit time. So one mark question. OK. Now we are moving to the next question, B part of the question number one. The driver presses the accelerator and the speed of the car starts to increase from 25 meter per second. The car accelerate, accelerates at 1.5 meter per second square. The first part is calculate the resultant force acting on the car as it accelerates. You know, the mass of the car is given, the Acceleration is given and the resultant, question, resultant force is question. So you can apply the Newton's uh, second law of motion. And this is mathematical equation is F is equals to MA and you can calculate the resultant force. I have done this on the paper. Let me show you. Okay, on your screen, B first part. A is 1.5 meter per second square given. M is equals to 800 kg given. The resultant force is question mark. F is equals to MA, 800 multiply 1.5. And the answer will be 1200 newton. It's a, it's a two mark numerical. <clears throat> okay, so we are moving to the second part of the B. Explain why the forward force acting on the car due to engine is greater than the value in the B first part. The force in the B first part, which you calculated 1200 Newton, that is the force required to accelerate the car. But the engine has to provide force more than this. The reason is that uh, there is air friction. The engine has to provide force to overcome the air friction. There is friction between the tires and the road of the uh, and the road. So the engine has also uh, provide the force to overcome that and uh, that friction. So, you know, the engine not just only provide the force for the acceler acceleration, acceleration, it also provide the force to overcome the air friction and the friction between the tires and the roads. I have written its answer. It's a two mark question. Engine provide 1200 Newton, which is the resultant force needed to accelerate. But engine also provide force to overcome air friction and friction between tires and road. So it was a two mark question. Okay. The next question is B third part. He says determine the speed of the car four seconds after it starts to accelerate. You know, its initial speed, we know, we know the acceleration, the time four seconds is also given to us. So we can find that what will be the final velocity. And you remember the formula for the uh, acceleration is A equals to V minus U divided by T, where A is acceleration, V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, and T is the time. So 1.5 equals to V minus 25 divided by 4. 4 multiply 1.5 will give you the answer 6, and V minus 25. So V will be equals to 6 plus 25, and the answer will be 31 meter per second. So it's a two marks numerical. Uh, I hope you have understood. Okay, so we are moving to the next question here. Uh, on, your, on your screen, we have question number two. Figure 2.1 shows a bed that folds 
away against a wall during the day. You see here we have a hinge, so this bed can go up and it can come down. It can go up and it can come down. Here, this bed is actually 0 0.65 meter long. The center of the gravity, according to the question, is uh, at the point of 0 0.3 meter. 3.5 meter from this hinge. So here the weight of the bed is acting. When these legs will be on the floor, there will be an upward force. Okay. So let's check what is the question. He says, let me reduce the size so you can see the whole thing together. Okay. When it is horizontal, the bed is supported on one side by a hinge and on the other side by two legs. The weight W of the bed act, acts through its center of mass, which is at a horizontal distance of 0 0.35 meter from the hinge. A part is, the mass of the bed is 26 kg. The gravitational field strength G is 10 Newton per kg. Calculate the weight of the bed. The weight of the bed is very simple. W is equal to mg. The mass is 26 kg. The G value is 10. You just apply that formula. W is equal to mg and you can calculate it. I have uh, done this. You can see on your screen question number 2a part. W is equal to mg. 26 multiplied by 10 and it will be 260 Newton. 260 Newton. I, it's a one mark numerical. You, I hope you have understood. Okay. The next question, B first part is, State the principle of moments. The principle of moments is very simple, that if you have a body in equilibrium, the, the clockwise moment acting on the body will be equal to the uh, anti-clockwise moment. In other words, people say the sum of the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment will be zero. So I have written this answer also. Let me read that. For an object to be in equilibrium, the total clockwise moment must be equal to anti-clockwise moment about the same pivot point. So it's a two marks definition where you have to write the, describe what is principle of moment. State the principle of moment, sorry. So B, second part is determine the size of the total upward force exerted on the bed by the two legs when the bed is horizontal. So the total force is a three marks numerical. Let me show you the diagram here. Let me show you. Let's make this size larger so you can understand. When the bed is horizontal, when the bed is horizontal, this is the pivot. Here is the center of mass of the bed. So here its weight is acting. Weight is acting downward. Here in the legs, an upward force will be acting. This weight of the bed will be trying to produce a clockwise moment, but the reaction in the legs will be trying to produce a anti-clockwise moment. The clockwise moment and this anti-clockwise moment, they will be equal to each other. This clockwise moment is weight of the bed multiply 0 0.35 meter because the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the weight and the pivot is 0 0.35 meter. And this force, which we want to calculate, that force multiply with 0 0.65 meter. The reason, the line of action of the force here and the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and the pivot is 0 0.65 meter. This force is trying to produce an anti-clockwise moment. This weight is trying to produce a clockwise moment. So they both are equal. So this is the main principle on which we will do the calculation. So on your screen, I hope you can see F1, D1 is equals to F2, D2. 260 multiplies 0 0.35 equals to F2 multiplies 0 0.65. So F2 will be 95, 91 divided by 0 0.65 and F2 will be equals to 140 Newton. It is a three marks numerical. I hope you have understood it. Okay, so... B, second part, yeah, so the question number two is done. Okay, <clears throat> on your screen we have question number three. A large power station burns oil to heat water in a boiler. A part is, 
state the name of the form of energy stored in the oil before it is burnt oil contains chemical potential energy oil has chemical potential energy in it b first part is state the state and explain whether oil is a renewable or non renewable energy so oil is a non renewable energy source the reason is that the once all the sources of oil are exhausted we will be not able to reproduce it oil cannot be replenished with the passage of time it will run out and we cannot reproduce it so i have written this answer also let me show you that my working here on your screen i hope you can see question number 3 a part chemical potential energy b first part oil is a non renewable energy source because it cannot be replenished it will run out okay b second part is uh, describe one environmental issue caused by burning oil to generate electricity in a power station you know when the oil is burnt carbon dioxide is produced carbon monoxide is produced uh these gases they act uh, uh, they are greenhouse gases so what they do they create global warming another bad effect of the carbon dioxide is that when it is mixed with the rainwater it makes carbonic acid and this causes acid rains so so one mark question i have also written its answer burning oil produces carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide uh, which causes greenhouse effect and cause global warming so one more question next question c first part is uh, hmm. state what is meant by efficiency efficiency can be defined by two ways one way is efficiency is um total efficiency is ratio of useful output power to the total input power another way of defining efficiency is useful output energy divided by total input energy so there are two definitions you can write any one whichever you like you can write in the answer i have also written this answer efficiency is ratio of useful output power to the total input power or ratio of useful output energy to total input energy so okay ji next question is the c third part sorry c second part it says the efficiency of power station is 0.38 or 38% its electric power output is 1.9 x per 9 watt calculate the input power of the power station it's a two marks numerical so let me show you the working efficiency is given by the formula useful output power divided by input power efficiency was given at 0.38 <clears throat> and the useful output power was 1.9 x per 9 the input power this question if i take the input power to the other side so it will be 1.9 x of 9 divided by 28 you do it on the calculator and the answer will be 5 x of 9 watt 5 x of 9 watt so the input power is 5 x of 9 watt so two marks numerical i hope you have understood the next question is the energy wasted in 2 hours so we have to calculate how much energy is wasted now you know <clears throat> the question is energy wasted in 2 hours so first of all let me calculate how much is the power wasted wasted power is equals to input power minus the useful output power input power is 5 x per 9 minus output power is 1.9 x per 9 so my answer will be 3.1 x per 9 watts so this is the wasted power So, if you want to calculate wasted energy, the method is very simple. Wasted energy is equals to wasted power multiplied by. So, wasted power is three point one x for nine multiplied 
the time is two hours here i will put the time in seconds so 2 multiply 3600 3, so the answer will be 2.2 as per 13 joules so this much energy is wasted it's a two marks numerical the time taken in this formula was in seconds so the time was in the question it was given in hours so we converted it into seconds so i hope you have understood it kindly do this on a paper and do uh, the calculations on a calculator try it yourself then you will actually master this concept okay now we are moving to the next question question number four is on your screen a lamp is positioned at the bottom of a small pool of water the critical angle for light passing from water into air is 49 degree underline this uh, number given this is the critical angle of the water, okay? Critical angle of light passing from water into air is 49 degrees. So critical angle is 49 in this question. Explain what is meant by the ter term critical angle. Critical angle is when the light is traveling from a dense medium, optically dense medium into optically rare medium. The angle of incidence in the optically dense medium whose corresponding angle of refraction in the optically rare medium is of 90 degree. That angle of incidence in the optically dense medium is called critical angle. This is a definition, you should remember it word to word. It's a two marks definition, you know. <clears throat> I've written it is also angle of incident, uh, angle of incidence in optically dense medium for which angle of refraction in optically rare medium is of 90 degree this angle of incidence is called critical angle it's a two marks numerical okay the next question is uh here the lamp sends light let me reduce the size here the light the lamp sends light towards the surface of the pool Figure 4.1 shows three rays of light that are 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree to the horizontal. Okay, reduce the size further. On the figure 4.1, draw the path taken by each of the three rays after they strike the surface of the water. You see, here the light, the here, you see what is happening. The you see here what is happening the light is in the dense medium water and what will happen the light will come out into the air into the rare medium now if you look at this first ray when it comes here it is making a 90 degree angle with the surface of the water so you know when the light enters into another medium and makes 90 degree angle with, with the surface it do not deviate it goes straight undeviated it will go straight following the same path okay then this second ray here it's making 60 degree angle with the horizontal at this point draw normal draw a normal first of all if this angle is 60, the angle here with the normal will be 30. So its angle of incidence at this boundary of air and water will water and air will be 30. And it is less than the critical angle. So this light ray, the second light ray, will enter into the air. It will be traveling from dense medium into rare medium. So it will deviate from its path. And it will bend away from the normal. So you will change its path a little bit. You will bend it. Okay. Then on this third ray, at this point, draw a normal. Okay. Draw a normal here. This ray here makes 30 degree angle with the horizontal. Here it will make 60 degree angle with the normal. It's geometry. So... The angle of incidence is 60, which is more than the critical angle given in the question. The critical angle is 49. So the process of total internal reflection will take place here. 
here the process of total internal reflection will take place so it makes 60 degree with the normal so with the help of a protector make an mark an angle of 60 degree and this will be reflected back into the water i have it's a three mark question i have drawn this on a paper let me show you okay i hope that it's on your screen you can see the first ray i have drawn it with the red it will go straight here you can see i have drawn a normal here it was 60 angle so here it will making 30 angle with the normal so it will come out it's less than the critical angle and this angle of incidence is less than the critical angle so this light will go into the air but it will bend towards away from the normal it will bend away from the normal so i have drawn this ray then third ray i have drawn a normal here it was making a 30 degree angle here with the horizontal so here the angle of incidence will be 60 which is more than the critical angle so the total internal reflection will take place this angle is 60 this angle will be also 60 so i have drawn a and um, the reflector ray the process of total internal reflection has taken place it's a three marks question so famous question and uh, don't forget it okay just keep it in your mind i hope you have understood it okay question number 5 is on your screen is talking about figure 5.1 shows a loud speaker inside a glass bell jar that contains air the loud speaker produces a sound of frequency 2200 hertz so it's a bell jar here we have a vacuum pump connected so if you remember the bell jar experiment okay so what's the question the first question is what state what is meant by the frequency of a sound frequency of a sound means the number of the sound waves passing from a point in one second that is called the frequency of a sound or number of compressions passing from a point number of wavelengths of sound waves passing from a point in unit time so very famous one mark definition okay the next b first part is the speed of the sound in air is 330 meter per second calculate the wavelength of the sound in the air you know wave equation v is equals to f lambda v is equals to f lambda where v is the speed of the sound f is the frequency of the sound and lambda is the wavelength of the sound so if you want to find out the wavelength the frequency is given speed is given very simple i have done this on a on a on a paper let me show you yeah here here you see b first part v is equals to f lambda so lambda is equals to v by f v is 330 and the f is 2200 you divide them the answer will be 0.15 meter 0.15 meter I hope you have understood it. It's a numerical. It's a two marks numerical. B second part. The sound passes from air into the glass. State what happens to the frequency of the sound. When the sound waves will enter from air into glass, the frequency will not change. It will remain unchanged. And then he says, what will happen to the speed of the sound when the sound enters? from gas into a solid the speed will become faster its behavior is different from the light remember that thing because these are sound waves so when they enter from air into glass their speed increases i have written their answer also frequency remains unchanged speed of the sound will be larger in glass okay remember it's sound and its behavior it behaves differently than the light rays okay so then we have question c part and c parts first portion describe how sound is produced by the loudspeaker you know the loudspeaker has a cone it has a diaphragm and when that cone vibrates it makes the diaphragm vibrate 
So when the diaphragm vibrates, it moves to and fro, it produces sound. Okay, I have written its answer. Let me read it from there also. Question number C, first part is, loudspeakers diaphragm vibrate to and fro and produces sound. You know, to produce sound, it is a condition that the source of the, which produces sound, that should vibrate. So the diaphragm of the loudspeaker will vibrate to and fro. And by its vibration, the sound is produced. The next question is how sound is transmitted through the air. You see that when the loudspeakers diaphragm vibrate to and fro, the air adjacent to the diaphragm or the loudspeaker, in that air is compressed and compressions and rarefactions are produced in that adjacent air. So diaphragm continues vibrating and those compressions and rarefactions are produced in the adjacent air. And by this compression and rarefaction produced in the adjacent air, longitudinal waves are produced in the adjacent air. And by the help of those longi longitudinal waves, the sound energy propagates or the sound energy is transmitted. I have written this in, on, on the paper. Let me show you that. The diaphragm produces compressions and rarefactions in adjacent air by its vibratory motion to and fro motion. So longitudinal waves are produced in air and sound energy propagates through air or transmitted through air. So it's a two mark question. I hope you have understood. Okay. Uh, it's second part. C second part is a pump is connected to the tube at the bottom of the glass bell jar. The pump is switched on and it removes the air from the glass bell jar. Explain why the volume of the sound heard outside the bell jar decreases. You know, in this bell jar experiment, in this bell jar experiment, so when there is air inside this bell jar, and this loudspeaker produces sound, you are able to hear it. But when you switch on this vacuum pump and the, the bell, the loudspeaker is still on, as the vacuum will be sucking out all the air, the, the, the sound which you will be hearing outside this bell jar, that, that sound, its volume will start decreasing. The question is why? Because, you know, the sound waves, they travel, for their travel, they require medium. And by the vibration of the air molecules, the sound energy is traveling. So if you, are, you have started removing the air molecules, the number of the air molecules left in the bell jar will be gradually decreasing. So the transfer of the sound energy through them, because the number of molecules of air left in the uh, bell jar, they are decreasing. So the transfer of energy, the sound energy, by the vibration of the air molecules, that will be affected. And as the air molecules disappear, they go out, less air molecules are left there to carry the energy and give it to the next molecule. So the medium is disappearing because the sound waves require medium to travel. So as the medium will be disappearing, the sound heard outside will become lower and lower. Its volume will reduce. I have written its answer. Let me read that answer also. Volume of sound heard decreases because number of air molecules in the bell jar decreases and sound energy cannot travel through air efficiently. When there are less number of molecules, the efficiency of the sound energy transfer will be affected. It will reduce. So that's why you are hitting low volume. I hope you have understood. Okay, we are going to the next question. Next question is question number Okay. Next question on your screen is question number six. 
two flexible iron strips wx and yz are placed close to each other inside a solenoid long coil the end w of the wx and the end z of the yz are held firmly in position so here they are held firmly at w and at z position they are held uh, firmly figure 6.1 shows that the solenoid is connected to a dc power supply and a switch so here you have a dc power supply here you have a switch the switch is closed and there is an electric current in the side whenever you will close it so the electricity will start flowing in it so their question is the switch is closed and there is an electric current in the solenoid and w of the flexible iron strip wx becomes a magnetic south pole he says you know the dc current is flowing and these are iron strips so this coil will become an electromagnet when this coil will become an electromagnet due to electromagnetic sorry due to magnetic induction these iron strips will also magnetize he has told us that this w has become south pole if this w is south then this x will be north if this x will be north this y will be south and if this is south then this z will be north so his question is and w of the flexible iron strips wx becomes a magnetic s pole a part is state the type of magnetic poles produced at x y and z so if this is south this will be definitely north this will be definitely a south and this will be north so north south north north south north i have done this on a paper let me show you okay so if w becomes south the x will be north if x will be north this y will be south and this y will be south then this z will be north so x is north y is south and z is north pole i hope you have understood it okay the next question is he says state and explain what happens to x and y because the flexible iron strips are magnetized you know these two ends they are oppositely they have the opposite poles on them this x is a north pole and this y is a south pole so unlike poles will attract each other so what will happen they will move towards each other and they will become in touch they will touch each other x and y i have written this answer x and y will attract each other and they touch x is north pole and y is is a south pole opposite poles attract each other it's a one mark question here the next question is b a relay operates a switch in one circuit using the current in a different circuit state one example of a relay used in this way and explain why a relay is used you know relay acts as a switch and it acts it is in circuit 1 and it act as a switch for a circuit 2 the circuit 1 whose switch is in our hand it has very low current so we touch its switch and it gives current to relay and relay act as a switch to another circuit circuit number 2 which has high current and high voltage so you see what we are doing we are operating a switch which has low current and low voltage and it is controlling a relay and relay is acting as a switch for another circuit number 2 which has high current and high voltage we do not want the operator to touch a switch for a circuit which has high voltage and high current because that can be dangerous so i have written this answer i have written the answer about a starter motor the starter relay functions as a switch it relays the small current from ignition circuit to cause a much larger current from the battery to operate the starter solenoid and the starter motor in this way the relay works like a remote switch it's a little complicated so please wherever you find the literature for the starter motor and relay in your book please read it again 
Okay, so that's it for question number six. Okay, we are moving to the next question. Question number seven is on your screen. The AC mains electricity system in a house consists of three wires, the live, the neutral, and the earth. State the purpose of the live wire. The live wire is the wire which brings the high voltage live current from the power supply or main supply or the uh, to the appliances so live is bringing the live current to the appliance is a wire okay so question number seven a part live wire brings high voltage current from source of electricity to appliances the next question is one mark question is explain why the neutral wire is needed you know to complete the circuit the the current which comes out of the uh, supply main supply that same current should go back so we have neutral wire and what the neutral wire do it takes the low voltage current back to the main supply and completes the circuit so the neutral wire i have written this also the neutral wire provide path for low voltage current to go back to source of electricity and complete the circuit. I hope you have understood it. Okay. The B part is each circuit in the house includes a fuse for protection. An electric, an electric appliance is switched on and the current in the fuse becomes greater than the rating of the fuse. State and explain what happened. You know, when you have a fuse, the fuse has a very thin wire in it. And if the current exceeds the rating of the fuse, due to the heating effect of the current, if the current exceeds its rating of the fuse, due to the excess heating effect of the current, what will happen? That thin wire in the fuse will melt and it will break and when it breaks the path of the current is broken so what the fuse do it cut off the supply of the live high voltage current to the appliance so the fuse will melt okay so two mark state explain what happens so i have written this answer also uh, when current exceeds the rating of fuse, the thin metal wire in fuse due to heating effect of current melts and breaks and supply of current to appliance is cut off and circuit is broken. It's a two mark question. I hope you have understood. Okay. Next question is state and explain in which of the three wires the fuse is located. Remember this thing, the fuse, the switch, the breakers, they are always connected in the live wire. So here, particularly, he's asking for the fuse. The fuse is connected in the live wire. And the reason is why you put it on the live wire, because if the current exceeds the rating of the fuse, the fuse will blow it will this the wire in the fuse will melt the fuse will blow and it will cut off the supply of the high voltage current to your appliance so once it's blown the your appliance is isolated from the high voltage live current and it becomes safe to touch it becomes safe to repair the appliance okay so that's why we always put the fuse on the live wire. Fuse is always connected in the live wire so that when fuse melts or blow, the connection of the appliance with high voltage current is cut off. Appliance becomes safe. It's the two mark question. I hope you have understood it. Okay, so we are done with the seventh question. Dear students, we are done with the section A of uh, 
October November 2016 to one paper today we have done its uh, section A its section B we will do in some other video i hope that uh, i am a little bit help to you please keep on working hard and your answering skills will improve Thank you very much everybody have a good day and god bless you all